The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary John. Hello and thanks for joining us again. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johns. Today on Simply Southern, we'll show you how making chickens more comfortable makes more money for farmers. You find out if you build a chicken house and you, and you make it where you can control the environment around the bird, the bird does better, he, he gains weight better, he's more comfortable. We'll meet an Alabama artist who's spreading the love of painting on more than just her own canvas. I read somewhere one time that painting is a way to get away without leaving home. Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants has a fresh crop of jalapeno peppers and he'll show you how to make a couple of sauces that'll make your other dishes even more delicious. But we'll start at the Kentuck Art Festival. It brings between 10 and 15,000 people to Northport every fall and it's nationally recognized as a premier art festival. We've been to festivals in Ann Arbor, Michigan and other states, but this one by far tops. What sustains us? Food, family, faith. Alabama farmers live those things every day. They conserve our resources, clothe our families, and fill our tables. They cultivate jobs for our communities and values for our future. Farmers grow it all right here in Alabama. There's no such thing as downtime when you own a farm. This is your land. You tend it and try to get the most from it, no matter the weather or time of day. It's been that way for generations. And for generations, your local quality co-op store has been there for you, with a full range of agriculture supplies and services, from feed to fertilizer, seed to grain storage, and the right hardware for any application. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. To a layman, a shovel is meant to dig dirt and a curtain is meant to block light. But to a folk artist, it just takes a little bit of welding to give that old shovel new purpose as a metal chicken statue. Or a little bit of sewing to transform a curtain into a warm, cozy quilt. And quilts and metalwork, that's just the tip of the iceberg at the annual Kentuck Festival of the Arts in Northport. These beautiful quilts tell a story but each piece has extra special meaning to their creator, quilter and Tuscaloosa native Yvonne Wells. Well, I got into quilting in 1979 when we had added a large addition to our home and put a fireplace in. However, the fireplace was not keeping me warm, so I said, I think I make something. And uh, I did. I made a small coverlet, and from there it went haywire, but it meant a lot to me. When I made that quilt, I said, that came from my son's pants or they came from my daughter's uh, dress, or my husband's hat, or anything of that kind. It meant a lot to me. So when I did display it, I was able to incorporate that into what I was telling a story. Yvonne has sold her quilts at the Kentuck Art Festival in Northport for the past 33 years. Her work epitomizes the spirit of Kentuck art. There's the spirit of creativity that a lot of our artists are self-taught and they have little access to traditional methods and supplies so they take whatever surrounds them in nature or in their home and they come up with the most creative designs and sculptures. From fanciful lights to punny art pieces, that creativity is on display in every nook and cranny of the Kentuck Art Festival. Handmade brooms, pottery that makes faces at you, a snowman created from fronds instead of snowflakes. Even the musicians, like one-man band The Suitcase Junket, rely on unique instruments to create a one-of-a-kind toe-tapping sound. But if folk art isn't your thing, no worries. 270 different artists dot the festival grounds in a wonderfully dizzying maze of makers, so you're sure to find something that tickles your fancy. Well, my favorite is always the pottery, but what's great about Kentuck is it sort of forces you to go outside your box and you start looking at things that you never would have thought of. So it's really creative, and we've been to festivals in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and other states, but this one by far tops. Yes, with the combination of foods and bands and 
you really need almost a full day to enjoy it. The festival is not just a spectator event. There's lots of family-friendly festivities. Start with face painting, throw in a music lesson or two, and make sure your budding artist leaves with a handcrafted birdhouse, courtesy of the West Alabama Woodworkers. For the most adamant art aficionados, the Kentuck Art Center in downtown Northport is open year-round, Tuesday through Saturday. But the festival captures a spirit that can't quite be replicated under a roof. They say the word Kentuck means a heaven kind of place. And after one visit to this festival in the Pine Alcove, you'll understand how this space earned its name. This is the finest festival in the nation to me, even though it's ranked number five. I could put it at number one because of the people who are in charge, the volunteers and the donors, and all of those people make up Kentuck Festival of the Arts each year. If you've not been to the festival, you need to put it on your bucket list because it's a, one of the treasures that Alabama offers where you can actually get this deep, rich taste of Southern culture mixed in with creative artists from all over the United States. So if you just put it on your bucket list and come once, you will be back. The 2019 festival dates are already set. It's going to be October 12th and 13th. Artist applications open March 1st, but you better hurry. They have 270 openings, but they turn away applicants every year. And that national ranking that the festival has, it's based on artist sales. So if you make it in, you know that you're going to be taking some money home. Oh yeah. When Simply Southern returns, Lolita Dickinson's captivating canvas creations were inspired by the beauty around her. Now she's using her art to inspire others. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. You could see it before anyone else. Your future, your own place, independence. It's not perfect, but you love it. A place to grow, to be yourself. All for a better life. Dream big, Alpha Insurance. All for a better life. Protect your dream with Alpha's new business owner policies. FFA makes a positive difference in the lives of students by developing their potential for premier leadership, personal growth, and career success through agricultural education. We're strengthening American agriculture and providing our members with the skills needed to build healthy local communities, a strong nation, and a sustainable world. We are the next generation of agriculture. It's our turn now. Let's show the world what we can achieve together. We, we are FFA. FFA. A farmer has to live on faith. We do all we can do, but we can only control so much. Alabama is the second largest poultry growing state in the nation, so we're trying our best to grow all the corn we can for that. What we produce not only feeds and clothes all of the United States, but about half of what we make goes on to the world market. We've been able to improve yields, have some things that, that can help us produce a better crop. I'm proud of the product we make and proud that I can say I'm an Alabama farmer. Like every aspiring artist, South Alabama painter Lolita Dickinson faced an intimidating challenge when she first lifted her brush to canvas. With her works now sought after in galleries across the Southeast, she's turned her talents towards helping others find their own courage to make that first brush stroke. There's a lot of variety to Lolita Dickinson's artwork. From the rural scenes of her childhood to the natural beauty of her present day home near Mobile Bay, her paintings are a catalog of the things that inspired her to a career in the arts. You might think the lady was born with a brush in her hand, 
but it took a teacher to kindle her passion for paints. I had a teacher in high school that one day brought in her paints and I'd never seen oil paints before. Never had I picked up a brush. It, it really hooked me into wanting to be able to create things uh, using paints to express feelings or express places I'd been. Her artwork covers a range of styles from still life and abstracts to color representations of country and coastal living. Lolita is a very versatile artist. Some of her uh, work is in acrylic, some oil. Um, she is also a beautiful, does beautiful pottery. The new series that she has, the Red Purse series with the women, is, is one of my very favorite that she's ever done. My work has really evolved to more of a kind of a semi-abstract, generally, because I feel like that's where I do my best work. I like having a little mystery in my painting. I like for people to be able to look for something that's maybe not real obvious. Her art is a staple in galleries like Black Belt Treasures and the Pink Rooster in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, where she teaches classes regularly. She took me from being a paint-by-numbers painter. Uh, I'm still a painter, but I'm working towards artist rank. <laughs> She's very inspiring. You look at her work and you want to be able to paint just like she does. She makes your classes effortless. As inspiring as she is to her students, Lolita enjoys the opportunity to spread her love of the arts to a new crop of painters. It's a really a rewarding thing because I also learn when I teach. You know, you have a student that does something a little different than maybe what you propose they do, but you learn yourself. I read somewhere one time that painting is a way to get away without leaving home. So even if you express yourself in a different way than maybe the teacher suggested, doesn't mean it's wrong. And maybe that person in time will grow and by finding a different method may come up with something even better than what I taught in class. So I never really feel like there are failures. Whether it's through her own paintings or helping a new artist discover their voice, Lolita hopes her gifts will encourage more people to appreciate and be able to express the beauty around them in their own unique way. You cannot help but love her, love her artwork. She's a happy person. You can see that in her artwork. Her work is very reflective of her curious personality. She sees color and she teaches you how to see color when you go out and you look at other things, whether it's a painting, whether it's a tree, whether it's an azalea bush, doesn't matter. It is truly something that time evaporates and you can get away from the world and a lot of the troubles that goes on in your life and everything and you can actually just focus on something that probably I think beats a pill for depression, you know? Learn to paint. Learn to see the beauty in things. And if you can learn to express even part of that on a canvas, I think it's very satisfying. For more information on Lolita and where to find her work, visit her website, lolitad.com. And if you're in the Mobile area and interested in one of her classes, the Pink Rooster in Ocean Springs is a nice day trip. You'll find a calendar of classes at pinkrooster.net. Coming up next, modern farming is a high-tech business. There's probably more technology on a modern chicken house than in your house. We'll tell you why when Simply Southern continues. One out of four Alabama residents have benefited from the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. Last year, Master Gardener Managed Gardens donated $150,000 worth of fruits and vegetables to food banks and over 25,000 young people developed math, science, technology, and engineering skills through 4-H. Now what we want to know is, how can we help you? The versatile peanut. Meat of the earth. Friend of the soil. Tasty. Nutritious, packed with protein. And Alabama peanut farmers nourish some very special things. Families, communities, 
and Alabama's economy. Peanuts. Good for you. Good for Alabama. And now, an Alabama tourism spotlight from Sweet Home, Alabama. The beautiful Gulf Coast beaches are a common destination for travelers to Alabama. But if anyone tells you to take a hike, consider the Hugh S. Branion Backcountry Trail. This series of multi-use trails stretches across the woodlands of Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, hosting a variety of flora and fauna in a 15-mile treasure trove of adventure. First inhabited by Native Americans, these hunting paths gave way to logging roads for European settlers in the 1700s. Today, they are suitable for hikers, cyclists, and campers, plus they're fully ADA accessible. In 2003, the first completed section was named for Hugh S. Branion, a former Gulf State Park superintendent who served from 1970 to 2009. For your next adventure, go online to alabama.travel. We've been raising fish for 33 years. Our farm and the catfish farms in Hale County, in this area, have had a huge impact on the labor, offering jobs. It's been a big economic boom for West Alabama. Our family is fully invested in U.S. farm-raised catfish. With annual sales of around two and a half billion dollars, Alabama produces more poultry than any other state except Georgia. So it stands to reason that researchers here would be developing cutting edge technologies to make the industry more efficient. As Kevin Worthington tells us, in less than 20 years, the National Poultry Technology Center at Auburn University has revolutionized the way farmers raise chickens. Mm -hmm. Now is that wrong? Scientists at the National Poultry Technology Center in Auburn literally wrote the book on chicken house construction. They say the way to raise a better bird is to raise them in a better environment. You find out if you build a chicken house and you, and you make it where you can control the environment around the bird, the bird does better, he, he gains weight better, he's more comfortable. For years, Jim Donald, Gene Simpson, and their associates worked out of pickup trucks doing poultry research on other people's farms. The National Poultry Technology Center was chartered by the Auburn University Board of Trustees in 2007, and they completed construction on their teaching facility in 2017. This is the only place in the world you can come and listen to a presentation and then turn around and do hands-on demonstration here in the building. So we're trying to build different pieces for uh, water demonstrations, heating demonstrations, uh, energy demonstrations with insulation and house tightness. If you tell somebody something, uh, they might remember 10% of it. But if you take them by the hand and, and get them involved uh, in a demonstration, it really begun, it begins to, to make a believer out of them. While the staff spends a lot of time with hands-on demonstrations, on-farm research remains vital. We held, I think in 2018, we held about 20 different workshops for people in the industry. I guess close to 2,000 people. Meanwhile, we have all kinds of activities going on, on on individual farms around the state where we've been testing and evaluating different sorts of equipment. We've got several dozen uh, on-farm tests that have been going on, many as long as 15 years. Water, power, and heat are a poultry farmer's highest overhead costs. But NPTC Research has developed innovative ways to reduce those bills. We learned that if you put gutters on a chicken house and handled it correctly, you could reduce water consumption for a grower by 80%. The savings of propane, a huge help. We learned if you change the light bulbs in a poultry house from Thomas Edison type bulb to the new bulbs, you saved him 90% of his lighting bill. When it comes to research, there really are no failures. But instead of a breakthrough, sometimes it shows you what not to do. We have a mission to improve profitability. And, and sometimes research that we do comes up with bad or negative results, which says, hey, don't do this. It won't pay. That's a good thing. I mean, to know that rather than implement it and have someone spend their money on it. it, it so uh, we, when we don't 
get a positive result, that's not necessarily a bad thing. While Alabama farms have improved by implementing practices based on NPTC research, the center has also benefited producers and consumers all over the world. We are one of a kind facility in that uh, we, ha we combine basically the, the research side, the extension side, and, and the teaching side, and, and, and really we're the guys uh, out in the field putting uh, what we're learning uh, from the research standpoint out with the growers. So, so we're definitely, and, and I would expand that to worldwide. We get a lot of questions uh, in other countries on how, how do we adopt these new technologies. So uh, our name is national, but we're really international. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, agricultural scholarships, and youth programs. Get your Ag Tag today. For more Simply Southern, be sure to follow us on social media. And while you're online, visit our website, simplysoutherntv.net. Simply Southern will continue in a moment. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is, it's all you need for your garden to succeed because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center, Bonnie Plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sidney Phelps here. We're back in the kitchen and we're working with jalapenos today. This is a couple of different sauces uh, that you may be familiar with and you may not be familiar with, but we're going to show you ways that you can use jalapeno in seasonal sauces that you can use for up to six months that they keep in the refrigerator. So the first thing we want to do is kind of a creamy sauce uh, that you can use with tacos, uh, enchiladas, chili rellenos, anything uh, that you want to kind of have like a little bit of a cool, little bit of heat. It's basically a cream based uh, sauce. So what we've got is we've got one eight ounce package of cream cheese. I've got eight ounces of sour cream that I'm going to add to the mixer here. So we're just going to basically put that in there. Um, and this is basically just kind of a, a good, like we said, good creamy sauce to put in uh, with a little bit of cilantro uh, flair and whatnot. So with that, we've got some cilantro here. We're basically just going to chop it up. We're not going to put the stems in there, just going to kind of discard those to the side. Light chop on the cilantro. The blender's going to do the majority of that. So about a cup of cilantro, add it into that. And then we're going to work with the jalapenos. So with the jalapenos, when you're working with them, you want to make sure that you're going to take the seeds out. If you want to keep it really spicy, just cap them, split them, throw them in there, seeds and all. Uh, but if you want to kind of control the heat, maybe make it mild, uh, like we're going to do today, we're going to remove the seeds, we're going to remove the, the interior of them uh, and basically gut the jalapeno. But the thing about that is you want to make sure that you're not doing it with your bare hands and if you are, you're going to wash your hands. So we're going to use just a, basically a, a teaspoon to pull these out. So first things first, we're going to cap it, we're going to have it, and then we're just going to take the spoon and scrape this out. So we're going to remove that right out of there. Toss it into the blender, and the same thing. We're just going to re repeat this for all of our 
jalapenos here. So really quick, take and scrape that out. And then remove these out. So one more, we should be good. You want to use about four uh, jalapenos and something like this, especially with the amount that we're using. Uh, and for good measure, we're going to keep one probably whole, take a small one, and just have some seeds to add a little bit of heat to this mix that we're making today. So throw that in there, get everything set, put the blender in, make sure we got it locked down, and let it roll. Pulse that together really good, make a good creamy sauce with that. The other sauce that we're looking at using is a COB sauce, a very traditional here in Alabama. Uh, a lot of uh, fast food, uh, chicken restaurants use this. And basically, a quick, easy way to make this is equal parts mayonnaise and spicy brown mustard. So we've got uh, about a cup, uh, two cups of mayo and two, two cups of spicy brown mustard. Roll that in there. Get that together. And we've got about three uh, jalapenos that have been finely diced down. We're gonna add those in for heat. Those have also had the seeds and everything removed. And basically we're just gonna work this up, blend everything really good together. Both of these sauces, like I said, will keep in the refrigerator up to six months. So no issues there. Uh, and you can see that that color is getting consistent. And basically with this, you're just gonna ladle it on a piece of bread, throw your chicken tender on, and your sauce, and you're good to go. If you wanna find more recipes like this, go to bonnieplants.com or check out the app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. Bonnieplants.com has hundreds of other recipes to help you prepare the bounty of your backyard garden. And if you need some help out there, ask Sydney by emailing him at simplysouthern at alifarm.com. Well, Mary, as usual, when Sydney's done, we're done. Thanks to all of you for watching today. Join us again next week when we'll ride the rails with train enthusiasts who never have to leave the comfort of home. And we'll show you a way to decorate with pumpkins that doesn't involve carving those spooky little faces into them. I'm Mary John. And I'm Jim Allen. We'll see you next week. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.